Hello and welcome to another Blue Art technical session. And today what we're going to demonstrate is really, really simple and it's cluster namespace or cluster name services as some people like to call it. I've had so many customers ask me about how this works and the value and the benefits it brings and then when we've implemented it, it's been extremely successful in simplifying lots of processes for companies in terms of the data type and also uh, having just a single mount point in a hierarchy uh, which I'll show you is what we're going to do today. So what I've done before this uh, session is to start and create two simple virtual servers. One, EVS uh, Virtual Server 1 and Virtual Server 2 and these two virtual servers are assigned on different nodes of the cluster, 1 and 2 as you can see it here. And what I'm going to do to make this even more impressive is go to File Systems and I'm just going to create a 32k file system here, really simple. Let's create that and let's just call this 500 gig as a size and we're going to call this one 32k and we'll assign it to Virtual Server 1. We use WFS2, the default file system from Blue Up these days and we'll create a 32k block size. Very, very good. So this will be a great area where we can mount in the clustered namespace and actually use um, large files, maybe for streaming or for rendering or for other, other um, processes that require large file reads and large file writes. So let's just stick that in there, 32k, pretty straightforward. And then what we're going to do is also create another file system, as you can see pretty quick, uh, which is going to be 4k. So I'm actually going to go to file systems and create another one here. I'm going to assign that one and again I'm going to just take it off our storage pool and it's going to be again 500 gig, really simple. Um, sorry, leaf thin provisioning on, also expansion and assign this to virtual server 2 and this is going to be 4k. And again following exactly what we've done before, 4k the virtual server which is on node 2, we're not using worm and certainly WFS2 is the default option of the file system, so hit 4k. And simply we have now two virtual servers, one on one node which was 97, well that's mounting, and one on the other node which is 98, which now have a file system. So they are 97 and 98. And what I'm going to do is just really simply create a clustered namespace. And what a clustered namespace is going to do is give me a hierarchy of different file systems across these two nodes. It really is that straightforward. So onto home onto clustered namespace and it's simply saying here to create a namespace enter a root label so let's call this top this is our top of our tree or our hierarchy very straightforward and hit apply and then from this what we're going to do from this top nothing's actually there except a label at the moment is we're going to create an nfs export to the root of that and then we're going to literally just obviously add links to the two file systems we've just created and the two EBSs. So actually the probably the easiest thing to do is add the links here first. So I'm going to add a link and I'm going to call this um, 32k because that's the block size that we created. And it's remembered my virtual server one and it's remembered my 32k. That was the, one of the first ones we've done. Again, we can use caching. Again, cross cache all files or cross volume uh, file system links. Very, very popular. Certainly, local read caching is used for uh, numerous things. If you have uh, solid state drives or you're using extremely fast SAS 15k drives, you could actually set an area up for caching. So, let's just put that at the root. So, I'm going to highlight where I want this and I'm going to call this 32k. So, that's going to create me a directory. There it is, there, 32k from there and it's actually pointed to virtual server 1 which is on the node and 32k block size. I'm then going to add another link and this is really impressive, I love this technology for doing this, is I'm going to create one called 4k. And again this could be off the other node so to balance the workloads I'm going to do that. So I'm going to change and select the 4k off the second node here and it's remembered that and there it is there, I'll leave that as the root, again caching could be used and I'm just going to use this, call this 4k. Again, put it at the top. It really is that straightforward. We've now created a clustered namespace with a 32k directory on virtual server 1 on one node and a 4k directory on virtual server 2 um, 4k. And that's actually two file systems being presented 
uh, from one NFS mount point across two nodes, but it really is that straightforward. So the last thing we need to do is actually put on an NFS export. So let's do that and let's call this one, and we'll stick it at the top of the cluster namespace. <laughs> and again, you can actually have different exports at different parts of the hierarchical tree in the cluster namespace. But for simplicity today, what we're going to do is just basically put it at the top of the cluster. So I'm just going to add in here, and again, CNS path, I'm just going to call this top. I'm going to show snapshots. And simply, you can put in all the NFS version 3 and the NFS version 4 access configuration um, access lists here. No root squash, as an example. So, very straightforward. There it is on the root. Hit OK. And we now have CNS set up on the root of our file system, on the root of our two nodes. And what I can do is simply then just go to, uh, to maybe um, two literal Linux boxes. Go Fedora first, and here's Fedora. I'm going to make a directory, okay, dir, and I'm going to call this one top to match this, and I'm going to mount the clustered namespace NFS 192.168.13, and remember we have two EVSs on here, but let's go with the first one, 97, colon, forward slash, top, top, and there we go. So if I CD to top, and do an ls minus als, guess what? I've now got in my directory here, off the first node, a 32k directory and a 4k directory. These are separate file systems that are being presented from a single NFS mount. Look at that. The second thing that's really impressive is, if I want to, I can go to another Linux machine, and maybe I, I tend to uh, pick it off. I've got 97 here as the virtual server, but I could also access exactly the same export because it's global across all of the nodes and all of the EVSs. So I'm going to go to another one here. Let's use um, Red Hat. And again, I'm going to make another directory. This is a different client. I'll just call it top. And again, I'm going to mount. Maybe I could mount the same uh, one, uh, uh, EVS, EVS1. But actually, I want to actually use the other node, the other head. So I'm actually going to go to the clustered namespace from the other head. So I'm going to put mount minus T, FS, 192.168.13. And we're going to, this is important, we're going to go to 98, which is the other EVS. I'm going to call it top and top. And literally, if I type mount, you can see it's mounted there on 98. And if I CD to top, LS minus A, LS, there we have it. I have a single mount point across two nodes off here. So one on 97 and one on 98. As you can see that, here it is off here. So we're actually looking at the same structure. One's on Red Hat. And one if I do a LS on here, you can see that I've got it off here as well. And if I have a look at the mounts, you can see that's off 97. And if I have a look at the mounts, this is off 98. So clustered namespace is extremely powerful. And if I go back to the SMU console and have a look here, you can see that my hierarchy, I go to home and I go to CNS. And you can see under the CNS banner, 32K and 4K. And these are the directories that are being presented to the NFS man. Again, this applies to SIF shares. We can support SIF shares in a cluster namespace. So that's all we're going to cover today on CNS. Hopefully you found that useful. And again, if you have a look at the Blue Art website, you will always find under uh, file systems and software, certainly um, a brief description of exactly what we were doing there as well. So global namespace. And it will talk to you exactly about the technical reasons and also why this is useful. Okay, thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed the session.